Now with George, it's exclusive with Christopher Steele, the former British spy behind the controversial Steele dossier. And George, many have been waiting to hear from this man, and we haven't heard from him in a TV interview since the dossier yeah, was released. Yeah, you know the title of the, of the documentary, Out of the Shadows. He's been in the shadows for five years. It's been five years since that dossier exploded onto the scene. Steele immediately became the world's most famous and infamous private spy. He had been hired with funding from the Clinton campaign to look into connections between Donald Trump and Russia. The raw intelligence he gathered was damning, some of it salacious, but some of the most explosive claims remain unproven today. I pressed him on those. How do you respond to critics who say you were doing foreign interference in an American political campaign? We were not foreign interference. The foreign interference in the American political campaign in 2016 was by the Kremlin and the Russian intelligence services. Well, you are British. You're not American. But Britain is America's closest ally. We have always had a track record of helping America. It would have been very curious if what we had chosen to do in 2016 was not to tell them. It would have been unthinkable. Fusion GPS is a corporate investigations firm created by two former reporters for the Wall Street Journal. One was Glenn Simpson. In the spring of 2016, he approached you with a job. What exactly did he ask you to look into? Two things, really. One was what the Russians were doing in terms of potential interference in the campaign, and two, what the links were between Trump and the Trump campaign in Russia. So you get this assignment, what do you do? You essentially get your network of sources to redirect themselves onto asking contacts in Russia about this issue. It asked them to look into what was being said amongst the elite in Russia and the government of the American election. Was there one key source you had for this report? There wasn't one key source, I would say. There was perhaps one key collector. What's a collector? A collector is somebody who obviously works for us directly, is paid for us directly, doesn't necessarily have direct access to information, but knows people who do. You can't name this person, but you met with this person in a European city relatively early on? Yep. What did you learn in that meeting? The contents of Report 080, I think it was, which are well known to the world. There were claims that members of the Trump campaign had coordinated with Russian officials and accepted a steady stream of information on Hillary Clinton and some of Trump's other political rivals. The first report also claims, quote, Trump's unorthodox behavior in Russia over the years had provided the authorities there with enough embarrassing material on him to be able to blackmail him if they so wished. In other words, that the FSB, the Russian security service, had compromised on Donald Trump. Basically, compromise is blackmail in Russian. This was the, I mean, for want of a better word, this is the P-tape. That's part of it, yes. What did he tell you? He relayed several sources, information, sub-sources, information that related to that event. In the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, Correct. 2013. Yep. It would be quite a tape if it in fact existed. We are coming on the air now with major news from the Department of Justice. Back against the wall, move aside, move aside. The acting attorney general, Rod Rosenstein, has decided to appoint a special counsel to investigate Russian interference in the 2016 election. The special counsel will be Robert Mueller. Christopher Steele and his work were conspicuous in their absence from the Mueller report. Along with the investigation that was done by Robert Mueller, a separate report was undertaken by Michael Horowitz, the Inspector General of the Justice Department. The Inspector General also pulled back the curtain on how Steele had gathered his information. It doesn't name Steele's collector, but the report does describe some of his methods. And we'd later learn he was not someone well-placed in the Kremlin, but an analyst in Washington. When the FBI sought this person out and interviewed him. He said, yeah, he basically gathered some of this information, but he was almost ambivalent about how accurate it was. Some of this information, including that allegation about the salacious tape, had apparently been gathered from people who had just heard about it or talked about it in jest. One of your main collectors spoke to the inspector general 
said that especially the compromise was word of mouth and hearsay, conversations with friends over beers, it was just talk. If you have a confidential source and that confidential source is blown or is uncovered, that confidential source will often take fright and try and downplay and underestimate what they've said and done. And I think that's probably what happened here. And today, do you still believe that that tape exists? I think it probably does, but I wouldn't put 100% certainty on it. So you stand by the dossier? I stand by the work we did, the sources that we had, and the professionalism which we applied to it. What he can't explain is why the tape has not come out yet. His answer is that the Russians haven't needed to do it because they got everything they wanted out of uh, President Trump. But, you know, that's been the heart of, this, of the criticism against Chris Steele, that he's talked about this tape. He put it in there, but it has not come out. And we can start seeing it on Hulu. On Hulu today. The full episode. Out of the shadows, that's right. All right. Thank you, George. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.